and welcome to Closing Trades right here on ET Now with me Aisha Faridi, Ajay Sharma joining in and Anisha Jain is going to be here in just a short while from now. But what a closing to the last uh, trading day of uh, the financial year uh, of the month and um, you know it couldn't have gotten better than this. 22,500 that's the print that you're seeing on the Nifty Futures, closing in on that mark and the Nifty spot as well. And today, uh, much unlike what we've seen the last two trading sessions of this week, it's been a large gap led move. Look at Bajaj Finance, 5.5% of an uptick coming in on that stock. Uh, FinServe as well, closing in on pretty much that kind of a gain as well. M&M is higher by nearly 4% right now. Aisha Motors up by about 3.5%. Hero Motor Corp, an over 3% move. Adani Enterprises over 3%. SBI up over 3%. And these are all the futures, uh, you know, prints that I'm marking right now. ONGC, again, a rip-roaring 3% move. I mean, this entire month has been also very good for ONGC. But that said, the stock continues uh, a buzz. And then, of course, you've got the big boys like LNT, Reliance Industries, all contributing massively to today's move. I'd say have asked blast. for a better financial close. Wow, what a photo finish close. But the uh, market is blasting away to yeah. glory. Just 30 points away from the all-time high on the Nifty. Yeah. Just about uh, 200 I mean, points away. That's now an academic on the mark. Bank We're Nifty. almost there anyway. We're taking it out in style. Just imagine, 800 point uh, kind of recovery in the matter of a week, by the way. And we're not even talking about the small caps. There's a massive rebound there. But today, uh, those part of the market is actually paling with comparison. That's a big move. Five, seven percent moves coming in in mega caps. Uh, uh, there's a there's a, a copper mine which just got commissioned in Adani Enterprise that triggered a hundred bucks move in a matter of minutes. So that's the kind of under ownership in several large caps. But also, remember, we were talking in the morning as well. There's a big uh, contribution from the uh, short covering as well. Today is the main expiry. A lot of positions are squaring up. Nobody wants to take positions overnight on an extended weekend as well. That is coming uh, also of help. And, that, and all this is happening, mind you, when US futures are actually in the red to start with. And we have actually lagged global markets in the last two weeks or so. So there's a lot of catch up to do. So we'll be discussing a lot of uh, interesting areas, market moving stocks and commentary coming in from Times Now Summit as well regarding a lot of policy work which may be aimed at going forward. We have uh, Nuresh and, uh, on the charts and Anshul Segal on, tech, on fundamentals to talk more about markets. Gentlemen, afternoon. Uh, Nuresh, I'll come to you first. The way last shot of trade is the setup looking, uh, one should be squaring off uh, profitable long positions, should we, or should we risk carrying them off? And especially Bank Nifty and is 200 point away, 30 points is what, Nifty the way from all-time high. How does the setup look beyond that in April series? Structurally, when uh, the index is making uh, new all-time highs, the bias should be to uh, ride on to positions. We are getting towards all-time highs. The only concern is today we are not seeing a similar uptick in the small cap and the mid cap indices. But the bias remains positive. Banks look pretty interesting because they've been a major underperformer for a really long time now. And the bank nifty has crossed about 47,000 levels. Some of the momentum uh, stocks are very clear. You are seeing ICICI Bank take leadership, come to a new all-time high. You have HDFC Bank trying to come to that 1460, 1470 levels. Kotak Bank has crossed the recent uh, swing highs. So the bias is banks could lead going forward. So continue to ride on to the position and keep a trailing stop loss. Good moves across the board. As far as the public sector banks are concerned as well, a Bank of Maharashtra, Yuko Bank, Punjabson Bank, all of these smaller names are also perking up as we speak. So a lot of vibrancy, not only in the large caps. Of course, bulk of the move is happening there, but don't forget the small cap and the mid cap indices too uh, are doing their bit. And individual names, take a look at VIP now, 16% surge, no less. We started off with a gain of around 8 to 9%. And consistently from there on, there's a buying which is happening. And it continues into the last hour of trade as well. Aegis uh, Logistics as well, wherein there was an initiation by IFL. They are talking about a target price of 500 rupees and that stock is in focus. We're also watching out for latent view. That acquisition that they have done has been taken very well by the street. There's a move of 12% on latent view as well. So clearly these individual names and then Century Textiles and other names of the world. But what are the underperformers then? Shopper stopped. It's down 4%. Safari, while VIP is doing very well, Safari is actually seeing a trade out. Uh, there's a 4% cut there. Blue Star, Team Lee, Store and Power. These are some of the other names. But uh, taking it across to Anshul as well. Anshul, what's your take on VIP if you've been tracking this one? And in Safari in comparison as a pair, uh, any view here? 
Um, hi, Anisha. In, in this space, actually, what, uh, what really played out is the uh, Safari business was built out of um, it was sort of an offshoot of uh, VIP. The gentleman who used to run VIP, he uh, quit and he started his own firm. And um, given that he had so much understanding of the business, he's been able to do a commendable job in building Safari. Um, on the other hand, in, um, in the incumbent uh, company, there have been issues on, um, on uh, uh, you know, consistency of management as also on continuity of, uh, of business. And that, um, that has led to some amount of market share having moved to uh, the new company. Um, and, um, uh, you know, this space overall has so much room to grow that it has room for everyone to grow, except that um, VIP has been a little bit of a laggard in managing managerial issues. If they get those issues in place, uh, clearly this business also is quite a strong business and, um, and uh, has quite a bit of room to grow, uh, this company as well. So uh, I think that positive on this space, uh, just because of managerial issues, one company is lagging over the other, but overall um, the opportunity size is quite huge. Right. All right, uh, CA Rudramurthy is also joining us. Uh, Rudra, good afternoon. Uh, there's a big breakout happening in Nifty and Bank Nifty. I wanna talk about Bank Nifty. As you we were discussing in the morning as well that parts of Bank Nifty were quiet last few days and that's why perhaps uh, you know, the, the, there was a flat line like HDFC, uh, even SBI for that matter. Do you think these two or uh, even Kotak has come back in style? Could be a big uh, area to bet on for the new series? Definitely, yes, Ajay. I'm confirming uh, with uh, clarity that yes, all the news, whatever we were waiting for in terms of the tax, uh, 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 the March quarter tax, advanced tax payments, and whether you wanted to see the US markets. Uh, GDP data or you wanted to see Fed decision on interest rate, all the things which happened from regulators in fact of the SEBI talking about the market froth, all that is already there now in the price and for me this is a great opportunity even now to enter on the long side and especially banks can definitely do good. And specifically, you were talking about private banks. Yes, my top two picks from private bank at current level will be both HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank. These are my top two bets. But let me put my neck out and tell the April series or the new series which we will be starting from the next week will see a very, very big up move. In fact, the next two weeks and the next two months till election, we will see an up move which was very similar to what we saw from Deepavali till February, the big move what Nifty and Bank Nifty and even mid and small cap saw that kind of a move we will see in next two months till the election results. I am not bullish but super bullish on market and for me PSUs will be the best sector and the current correction you have to use for buying good quality PSU stocks. The rally is still not over. And we are yet to even see furthermore big up move in PSU stock, especially I like from banking, SBI, Punjab National Bank and Canara Bank. So you were talking about private bank, no doubt HDFC and Kotak are the best, but I will still bet more on PSU bank where my choice is SBI, PNB and I'll be looking at uh, Canara Bank. However, other than this, look at power themes, stocks like NTPC power grid, very, very attractive even at current market price. I also like metals, especially in the Tata steel and sail looks very, very good. And also for me, Tata power is another great stock. NMDC still lot of space left. Biocon looks very, very attractive. This is a market to buy, buy, buy and all the stock names I've already given. Absolutely. Anshul, just want to pick up on that point. I mean, because, you know, there clearly seems to be a little bit of a dichotomy when it comes to PSBs and, of course, uh, large cap banks. Which um, side would you tilt towards? You think uh, the private banking names, uh, that too, the larger ones, which haven't participated in the previous leg of the rally, you think they have a scope for outperformance as opposed to PSBs? Uh, hi, Aisha. Uh, you see, if you look at the numbers um, on uh, PSPs versus uh, the private sector banks, on growth numbers, on ROE numbers, as also on uh, valuation numbers, PSPs look more attractive. Uh, while private uh, public sector banks trade at about one to one and a half times book, 
uh, on price to earnings basis, five to 10 times price to earnings. On ROE basis, there um, uh, the, the outlook for ROEs over the next one to two years is that PSPs will be in the range of 15 to 16%, which is where the uh, private sector banks are as well. On growth, uh, 15 to 20% uh, earnings growth. And uh, again, uh, private sector banks are sit in similar range. Now, if valuations are materially attractive as compared to private sector banks, then um, in absolute return terms, uh, PSU banks uh, should deliver better returns as compared to private sector banks. Of course, um, you know, if you want to prevent downsides, uh, prevent volatility, then clearly private sector banks, larger ones, are the, are the place to hide. But if you are looking for outsized um, absolute returns, then over the next one to two years, I think that even now, PSPs offer a better opportunity. Short break on that note, uh, 2022 500 is done on the Nifty. Uh, I'll come back and discuss uh, Pharma with you, Anshul. There's a, there's a name which, is, which you know, people avoided usually, but some marquee guys have come in in that Pharma name. And even your uh, earlier favourite, uh, Piramal Pharma, is blasting away today. We'll discuss these two stocks when we turn this after a short break. Paris, for example, with the Olympics. So tell us a little bit more about the partnership with uh, the IOA, the International Olympic Association, specifically for Olympics. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, for the Paris Olympics, uh, you know, we're exclusive in India uh, to ensure that fans across the country can get uh, access to top hospitality uh, for the Olympics and then get a sports experience overall. Um, you know, we want to make sports better. We want to ensure yeah. that... Uh, each fan gets uh, an experience which goes beyond watching the sport. Um, and we're doing multiple things around that. So uh, we want to ensure that, you know, when our athletes are, are performing live and, and contending for yeah. the medal, uh, hopefully a lot of goals, uh, you know, we can get as many Indian fans to Paris. It's a great destination. It's the first time a lot of different things are happening from an Olympic standpoint. Uh, the opening ceremony is going to be for the first time outside the stadium mm -hmm. on the River Seine. Um, and we want to ensure that across all the disciplines, we can get as many Indian fans out there to support them live and then have uh, great meet and greet experiences after that. So one of the events that we're doing um, post Neera Chopra's uh, yeah. finals, hopefully, and hopefully he wins as well. We're all supporting him. Uh, we want to ensure that our clients can get a meet and greet Mm -hmm. with Neeraj mm -hmm. in Paris, mm -hmm. hopefully wow. at the India House. Wow. And uh, that gives an amazing, incredible experience to be able to interact with him first uh, and understand firsthand in terms of what his overall thought process was, mind, mindset was, and right. experience was. So, with Dream Set Go, we are helping the sports fan experience sports. Yeah. With uh, everything at Dream Sports, you're building the ecosystem for the sports fan. Yannick, now coming to you. So, with Fancode, I know it's a, it's a, it's a premier destination for sports and uh, every, a lot of things around sports f for consumption of sports. So, uh, case in point, Formula One, I'm a big fan. This year, the minute I got to know that Formula One is available on Fancode, immediately signed up because last year I wasn't able to see it. So, how are you seeing these niche sports or different sports evolve grow? How are you seeing consumers adopt that? And maybe to, uh, you know, what uh, uh, Vikrant's point earlier was, not just in the urban centers, all across India. If you could talk to us, how are you seeing consumers, your, these sports fans, how are they evolving? Sure. Um, so I think, you know, the, the, the premise of what we started fan code was essentially the changing environment in India, as Vikrant spoke about, this increasing culture of young children actually taking up sport, where sports is actually permeated into culture right now. The interesting thing was in the last 10, 15 years, where there's more and more investment and more and more access to, let's call it tier one sports events, like the IPLs on 25 different channels, uh, the World Cups are on different events. Everything else wasn't getting enough of attention. So we set up FanCode really to solve that problem of access. And what we did was said that we're going to unlock the potential of digital 
which doesn't have to re rely on you know traditional business models of linear television to be able to cater to these fans across the length and breadth of this country so when you talk about whether you talk about formula 1 whether you talk about under 19 cricket when you talk about women's football world cup we have the ability to aggregate all these fans across and the premise has always been that instead of trying to go after and feature an event which gives us 100 million users we'd rather do uh, 100 events which have a million users each and kind of aggregate all right, so before I go to uh, uh, Anshul, there's a gentleman who's joining us from far away lands, and that is our favorite uh, Sanjeev Bhaseen, who's on a holiday. But today, because the expiry is happening exactly at the same price or levels where he had predicted about two weeks back, that is 22,500 or thereabout. Sanjeev, bang on. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your holiday. But uh, do you have an eye on the market? It's blasting away. Leave us, uh, give us some picks for April series. Yeah, good afternoon, Ajay. <laughs> it's morning here and I am thoroughly enjoying the weather and the market. And I'm tracking them very actively as I normally do. Uh, and lo and behold, last week at 21,800, I told you don't get perturbed. Expiry will be closer to new highs or, 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 or near old highs. I even thought 22,400, but it has exceeded that, 22,500. And, and I think that we will hit new highs now from the 1st of April. So I think uh, this was a very good opportunity, and like I said, it's the large caps which have driven the market. LNT, Reliance, Maruti, uh, you know, ICICI, and I think there's way to go. But here, I would leave you with one jewel in the crown for the April series, and for the rest of the year, if you may permit. Go ahead, Sanjeev. Yeah, so it's Bharat Electronics. I think of all the PSUs, the one which is going to be an outperformer is Bharat Electronics. It hit a high of 216 recently. And in the in the correction, it has hardly corrected. But, you know, if you see the order book, the defense uh, contracts, and the top and bottom line, it will surprise everyone. I Like you've seen CapEx goods do go through the roof. You know, ABB, Siemens, Bharat Electronics for me is a 350 rupee stock by this year. And in this April series, I'm looking at 240 at least. So Bharat Electronics unqu unquestionably is the best stock to buy. And that is my jewel in the crown for April and for 2024. Ajay. Uh, Sanjeev, and since you do believe that it's going to be a large cap led rally, let's have one top large cap idea. Does it continue to be ONGC? Co correct. ONGC and I'll leave you with HDFC Bank. Because I think now it's about time they both, they both started to perform. But, uh, but look, look, lo and behold, like I said, if you've been following ET now, last week at 21,800 when there was despair, we brought you to the, to the brink of a new high. And I still think the jewel in the crown is going to be BEL because this month it is going to be PSUs in April which will outperform on the back of results and after a you know, small bit of correction in which BL did not even hardly correct it. But now you are on the surge of a very good earning season, which will be led by BEL, ONGC and HDFC Bank. We'll keep an eye on all those stocks. Thank you very much. Uh, and also enjoy your holiday. So the BEL, ONGC are the stocks to watch out for. But coming back, uh, Anshul, I want to discuss uh, Piramal Pharma, which is back at 130 or thereabout. And there are some very interesting names which have come in in Wokhart. Do you track the business models totally from the business model point of view of these two companies? I do, Ajay. I've, uh, I've looked at both companies uh, in the past. And um, um, in pharma in general, the story has been that um, 2014 onwards, we witnessed uh, extra activity from US FDA in controlling production from India. And in this period, Indian companies were adding capacity, which was uh, underutilized. Uh, you could say that they were setting up capacities for the U.S. market, somewhat like a Mercedes car. But uh, they were manufacturing uh, Maruti 800s from these facilities. Um, so really, the margins were much lower than what the optimum margins from these facilities could be. Uh, and as a result, uh, you saw an, a, a de-rating in, uh, in pharma across the board. Um, what we've seen of late is that uh, extra bit of activity easing off uh, because of issues uh, on pricing within the country that is in U.S. And, um, and as a result, you've seen pharma companies expanding ROEs and margins also expanding and that leading to multiples, price to earnings multiples going up. 
Uh, many of these companies have broken through to all-time highs. Um, the two names that you've taken are far from all-time highs. Uh, while their business models, both of theirs, are, um, are actually improving. Uh, I'm not recommending a buy or anything. I'm just saying that uh, the operations of both these companies are improving quite tremendously. Um, if you look at Bocard, there were really two key issues. They needed capital for, uh, for uh, the novel molecule uh, which they were developing. And um, the outlook on that novel molecule was that it can generate uh, outsized revenues for the company over the, over the coming few years. And this molecule was, I think, in phase three, if my memory serves me right. And it, it was on the verge of clearing phase three, uh, phase three trials. Now, um, uh, they needed capital to do this. And that was the constraining factor. It looks like uh, with this round of uh, capital raise, uh, they may be uh, sufficiently capitalized to uh, fund this requirement. Uh, secondly, they had an underutilized um, uh, facility, an injectable facility overseas. Uh, where again, they've got third parties to come in and, um, and basically they've tied up with third parties where they're utilizing this facility as a out outsourced supplier for these third parties. Both these things mean that their capital utilization will become better. And I think the investors who have come in have bet on exactly this aspect uh, on this company. Uh, so that's really what is playing out here uh, in Wokar. Return ratios to get better. That's the take coming in on Waka. Thanks so much, Anshul, for making time and speaking with us today. So that's the latest. For now, the market has cooled off a bit. Uh, we are away from 22,500, but still remain in the similar zone. Right now, 22,455, 70 points away from that all-time high. But one stock which is in focus is Mahindra Life Space. We have Mr. Amit Kumar Sena, the Managing Director and CEO of the company, joining us to talk to us about one of the recent developments. Uh, well, um, you have, uh, you know, Amit recently acquired two land parcels in Bengaluru. Talk to us about the gross development value that could emerge out of this, the, the rationale behind these land acquisitions. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, very uh, apt question. Um, as you know, for Mahindra Life Spaces, uh, we have three priority markets, uh, Mumbai, Pune, and Bangalore. And so Bangalore um, is a market that we really like and like to deepen our uh, penetration, our market share. And within Bangalore, Whitefield is an area which has uh, the right mix of uh, jobs, IT, GCC, uh, and we wanted to uh, get our presence uh, in Whitefield area. So both these land parcels are in Whitefield area. They are separated by three, three and a half kilometer. Uh, the first land parcel is uh, right uh, next to the Hope Farm Metro station, a great location in the vicinity of all the IT and tech jobs, uh, well connected. Uh, and uh, the the second one, which is um, uh, second one is just off Whitefield, road, uh, it's two acre land, uh, very conveniently located as well. Um, and the GDP of these two locations is more than 2000 uh, crores. So 1800 crore from the first land parcel and more than 200 crore from the second uh, land parcel. So this is in line with our desire for us to deepen our penetration in, uh, in Bangalore. Uh, we love the market and we want to continue to uh, put efforts and investment behind it. Okay, I'm at that point is taken, but give me a few more details. What's the nature of the property development that you are envisaging here? Is it going to be ultra-luxury? Is it going to be affordable? Uh, when can we expect that? A few more details? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. Uh, Bangalore, as I said, is a crit uh, critical priority for us. And uh, we've had very successful launches in the last uh, few years. And a key theme that's consistent across our launches is uh, focus on sustainability. So our recent launch, Mahindra Life Spaces, Mahindra Zen, um, has been uh, is a first net zero waste, and net zero energy launch uh, in Bangalore. Our previous launch, Mahindra Eden, uh, in Kanakpura, was also Mahindra uh, was a net zero uh, energy uh, launch. So both the previous launch, Eden, was absolutely successful. Uh, life faces Zen is uh, right now in the process of launch, already a significant interest. 
we will continue that theme. Uh, Bangalore has appreciated our designs, which are climate responsive, uh, the kind of balcony, the kind of uh, uh, greenery that we are providing, the, the effort that we have made to preserve fauna and flora in these locations is going to be reflected in the designs and the home that we bring to the market. So both these locations will reflect the uh, outstanding design and sustainability at the right prices for our consumers as we bring them to the market in the, in the coming months. Right. Amit, also walk us through your recent launch of Mahindra Life Spaces Zen. Uh, that's Bangalore's first net waste and net energy project, as we understand. What's the launch timeline? What's the revenue potential? Yeah, so the project we got, Rera, uh, just uh, a few weeks back. Uh, it's just been launched. Um, the revenue potential is somewhere between 450 to 500 projects. It's a, it's a premium project. Uh, as I said, net zero energy, uh, net zero waste. Uh, so very exciting project. Um, typically, um, the project uh, of this size will take four years to come to market. Uh, so we're hoping that we can do it sooner. Uh, but um, that's what we are targeting in, in terms of bringing all the homes in one phase together in the next four years. Right. Also give us an update on the Pune market because what we understand is that the Vagoli project is to be launched in two phases, uh, phases that is, and you've recently uh, received the RERA approval as well for the project. So walk us through the GDV, the GDV and tell us what's happening uh, in terms of the launch process. Yeah, so we've launched that project already. The Vagoli project is uh, very exciting. It's a uh, five and a half acre of land in uh, uh, Vagoli or Karadi Annex, as we call it. Um, 1,400 crore GDV. Uh, we are breaking the phase one of the launch right now. Um, we are in the process of uh, uh, collecting all the, uh, you know, meeting the customers, meeting the channel partners. Um, the formal CP meet, which is a critical milestone in any launch, will happen in a couple of weeks uh, in, in mid of April. Given the year end, we just wanted to have sufficient time to ensure that our customers and channel partners understand the project. Uh, this is also a very exciting project. It has um, very uh, premium four BHK apartments that uh, that customers would love to uh, love to enjoy. Great balcony, great views, uh, climate responsive design once again, and a clubhouse. Uh, that will um, uh, create envy for many, many of our peers. Uh, so that project is underway and uh, hopefully we'll start to see uh, the netting, as we call it, from customers and channel partners in the next uh, three to four weeks. Thanks so much for joining us for that quick take on the latest development. Appreciate your time today. It's time now to slip into a very short break for the news that the market has come off a bit from the highest point of the trading session. We are uh, below the mark of 22,400 as well. Let's pull up the individual names and see where the pressure is coming from. Uh, is it Reliance which has given up the gains, Infosys, HDFC? Uh, because these were the names that were actually holding up. And in terms of the entire you know, pullers and draggers list, it's Reliance which is now down almost a quarter of a percent. Yeah, Axis Bank, Free Cement, Britannia, these are the stocks which are actually putting pressure and are all in the red. So we're below the mark of 22,400. Doesn't look like we're hitting fresh highs. And the 3 p.m. move is something which is happening on the downside for now because there's a bit of a vertical slip in the market at the moment, though there is still a gain of 1%. But from the high of the day, we have come off materially. We'll keep tracking the market on the other side. Don't go anywhere. We are taking a short break on the show. Back with closing trades right here on ET now. We've been talking about as to how the market has ebbed off a little bit from the day's peak, but that's okay. We're still closing in with a fab finish when it comes to the financial year and, of course, uh, the week as well as the month and the series. But Trishti is here to talk about one of the large caps which also hit a record high and has, uh, you know, pushed up along with uh, the rest of the markets, and that's Maruti Suzuki. Trishti uh, joins in with more data points on that. Trishti? Well, yes, Marty Suzuki as, uh, is at the record high levels in today's trading session. And not just that, this particular year from the start of the year itself, we have seen every month Marty is touching new milestones for itself. Once again, reclaim that 10,000 level back in the month of January. Then in the month of February, we did see that 11,000 mark coming in. And look at the move now. More than 12,000 on the stock price is what we can see in this particular month as we reach towards the end of this particular month. 
that is March. But there are a lot of triggers that are played for Marty Suzuki. So let's have a look at that because the recent trigger that is given to the, the leg to the rally is definitely the comments coming in from the government that they are they are looking to reduce the hybrid vehicle tax to 12%, which is currently over 40%. And if that happens, you know, uh, the prices of the hybrid cars will actually come down by 21%. And that could give a boo big boost to the demand for Marty Suzuki vehicles. Other than that, if we have to uh, look at the market share, then we have to mark that Marty Suzuki, despite the fact that there has been a weakness in the small car segment, managed to maintain the dominance with a more than 40% market share in the overall passenger vehicle industry. They were they had their clear focus on the SUV segment and in the UVs as well. Stocks, uh, come, cars like France as well as uh, Grand Vitara did very well for Marty Suzuki. In the CNG segment as well, they managed to retain their dominance and we really have to look out for their first electric vehicle launch. We have all eyes on that in this particular year itself. We will see that happening. In the export market as well, Marty Suzuki has come out with a very bullish commentary because they are planning more than 7.5 lakhs of units to be exported by the end of FY31, which for calendar year 23, this number stands less than 3 lakhs of units. And they've already come out with their uh, overall production plans as well. So come Street is also positive and looking for that as Marty Suzuki being the largest player in the passenger vehicle industry is very bullish on the Indian automobile space. And if you also look at the one-year performance of Marty Suzuki in comparison to the likes of m and as well as Tata Motors, we will see that the returns were really muted in comparison to that. Just a 54% runner for Marty Suzuki versus 70% runner for m and M and 145% runner for Tata Motors in the past one year. So it seems like Marty is definitely catching up the rally now and there's no stopping as the stock, stock is at record high. Right, okay, that's the take coming in on Maruti and some analytics over there. Uh, but we've definitely ebbed off a little bit. Britannia, of course, has flattened out. Reliance as well hasn't quite participated the way it did in yesterday's trading session for sure. So it's taking a bit of a breather and that stock now has... Uh, you know, fallen about a good seven tenths of a percent now, and that's quite a bit of fall from the day's peak that it clocked earlier today. Uh, LTIM, uh, Bajaj Auto, Tara Consumer, TechM, uh, Axis Bank, these have all been uh, relative laggards as opposed to what else is happening in the rest of the market. But uh, let's address another piece of news and an eating now exclusive. We are learning from reliable sources that Petroleum and Natural Gas Board or PNGRB wants more players in the LNG regasification business. In fact, my colleague Prakash Priyadarshi joins in with more details on the rational and the likely impact if the move was to be applied. Prakash? Yes, an important development coming in as we are learning from our sources that the PNGRB, that is Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board, wants more uh, competition in LNG regasification business in the country in order to provide more benefit to the consumer. We are given to understand that the PNGRB has come out with a recommendation that endorses to check uh, Petronet LNG Limited's monopoly in regasification uh, business. Therefore, it has uh, recommended to have a necessary uh, uh, changes in current rule in order to regulate regasification infrastructure in the country that could facilitate access of new player in regasification uh, business. A very significant development coming in. We are also given to understand that uh, PNGRB has written uh, to the Petronet LNG Limited to share details of its profitability and uh, uh, actual cost of uh, regasification. Along with that, uh, sources are also informing that the PNGRB has sought details related to it's a business diversification and uh, uh, financial performance of last uh, three years. Uh, PNGRB also seeks uh, you know, details related to capacity utilizations of PLL's uh, terminals and uh, business diversification plan. That's an important uh, development coming in. It is important to note that India's uh, uh, you know, LNG market is well set to grow beyond 9% in the next four or uh, five years. Therefore, it will provide an opportunity uh, to the uh, new player in LNG business. But it is interesting to note that as per uh, current practice, LNG regasification infrastructure does not come under the purview of uh, PNGRB. Therefore, the recent developments are being seen as an effort to control LNG regasification infrastructure by PNGRB going forward.
Okay, so that's about the LNG regasification, but take a look at the market and I would suggest bringing up the candlesticks for the market right now because I think we went below the mark of 22,300 as well. So uh, a complete reversal of sorts in the last 15 minutes itself and those are big red bars that you have for yourself on the screen. Yes, the year has ended on a good note for us. 27% to 28% gains, no less, for Nifty in this financial year. But in the last few minutes, the bulk of it has got undone in the sense that we were up almost one and a quarter percent, but now we're up only 0.7% below the mark of 22,300. Let's take a look at the mid cap and the small cap indices too, whether they have managed to give up gains because mid cap was as it is languishing for most part. So it's down about, it's up about half a percent and small cap as well will come up for you shortly. In the last few minutes, there have been those incremental red bars and the small cap has pretty much flattened out for now. Uh, pretty much, um, you know, flat at 15,276. But Mahantesh Sabra joins us on the show. Mahantesh, uh, uh, there was, you know, part of the street which was expecting that now the bulk of the rally is going to come from the large caps and the mid caps and small caps after that 70% gain in FI24 might see a bit of an underperformance. Would you buy that argument? It depends on how the, uh, you know, we see in terms of the earnings growth ahead because, you know, one of the key factors for the earnings is uh, obviously the monsoon, upcoming monsoon and the focus thereof, uh, as well as what's likely to be the outcome of the uh, general elections. Now, these two key uh, events will determine the earnings path for most of the companies and that therefore, uh, uh, I said it depends on how you, you will uh, see these events play out. If both these events play out uh, as the market expense, that means you have continuation of the government and you have better monsoon forecast, you will have a uh, solid earnings growth to come in. You might expect a little bit of moderation and valuation, but uh, the market momentum will not get disturbed, will not see a great fall, uh, will probably see a more steadier growth in market. We will not obviously see the like FY24, a 30% rally in large cap and a 60% rally in mid, -cap, mid caps and small caps. We will probably see them moderated down to somewhere around 20%, 15-20%, but, but uh, that's good enough. But uh, Nuresh, your view on the market right now as we are slipping and giving up those gains, 22,200 was a bit of a hurdle. Do you see us falling back below the, to that level? Uh, not really. So if you look at it, today is the last day of the month. It is also expiry. So where, what do we see on the last day of the month in the last 30 minutes is an ETF impact. You've seen this happen multiple times. You see large volumes happening in the uh, index heavyweights. Uh, for the last 30 minutes because ETFs need to uh, get the impact price closer to the closing prices of that day. So overall, this could be an opportunity for a short term trader to look at some buying which they have missed out on. So overall, the bias remains positive. I would actually take a risk and go buy some naked long calls of Nifty for the next few. that. Uh, the up move is here to stay. Uh, but Rudra, just, let's just get in, uh, you know, your thoughts as well in on a Bajaj Finance. Considering, uh, you know, that amongst the NBFCs being a large cap has been seeing a gradual run up. And today, of course, the stock is on a tear, over 4% of a move coming in. See, for me, Bajaj Finance has now clearly broken out and it is trading well above 6,900, which was a crucial hurdle before. So for me, every dip to levels closer to that 6,900 to 7,000 levels will be a buying opportunity. Stock has a very good potential to go back to those levels of 7,600, 7,700 levels very quickly. And I feel even at current levels and on dips to 7,000, Bajaj Finance will be a great buying opportunity. And quickly a view also on this small correction what we are seeing now. I fully agree with Nuresh. This is just that opportunity for people to buy in this dip. And it is just that monthly factor of expiry what is playing out right now. Use this opportunity to buy great stocks. And I see this up move continuing in the next week. In fact, in the next entire April series market will go up. Use this opportunity just to buy. Okay, hold that thought, uh, you know, gentlemen, we'll come back to you shortly to make sense of what's happening in the markets. But for now, taking a short breather on the show, don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. Well, the market is uh, not uh, relenting at all. We are still below the mark of 22,300. So there's no uh, buying on dips, which is emerging. Contrary to what uh, Nuresh and Rudra have to say, that this is just the impact of the last 30 minutes of the trading session. Maybe some ETF rebalancing on account of the year end and the expiry that we are seeing. But for now, the market has given up gains. Even Bank Nifty, for that matter, is down. And it took can be set for the mid cap as well. In terms of the individual names, VIP hasn't let go of too much of its gain. It's still up around 14%. Aegis Logistics up another 13% in the trading session, though rate gain is coming under pressure. That stock is down 6.5%, and Safari Industries has managed to lose out further. That stock is down almost 4 to 5%. Uh, but Mahantesh, what's your take on this entire consumption theme? FMCG has been a stock underperformer in the year gone by, and I'm talking about staple uh, consumption factors at that. Do you see anything that uh, gives you to believe that FI25 will be different for FMCG? No, I think there are many multiple reasons that can be attributable to attributed to the lower performance of FMCG companies. There has been uh, starkly lower volume growth. I wouldn't say negative uh, volume growth, but uh, very tepid volume overall volume growth. Uh, the premiumization effect is somewhere stalled, and um, you have. Uh, uh, commodity prices actually uh, eating out, uh, out the profits of most of these companies. Now, on all these three factors, as we move into the year ahead, uh, we can expect things to be a lot better. Uh, with better monsoon forecast, probably we'll see volumes uh, resurging once again for the FMCG companies. Commodity prices are likely to be a moderate ahead uh, and can add to the uh, bottom line effect or margin effect of many of these FMCG companies and quite frankly, uh, most of these FMCG companies are uh, under owned uh, in terms of the overall portfolios of uh, either the institutions or generally speaking the market. Mm -hmm. So uh, these factors when they con come together, we, would, we should see a better year ahead for FMCG companies because from the perspective of uh, growth, steady growth, most of these FMC com FMCG companies are well managed. Uh, they, they, yeah. The only thing that they need to get back uh, in terms of their mojo is the volume growth. If that happens, yeah. all other um, pieces will fall, fall in line and the companies will start doing better. Of course, the under ownership would mean we could see a valuation uptake. Uh, let's just uh, get Shrishti back and, uh, you know, get an estimate of how the Motown sales are going to be for, uh, you know, this particular month. That's the month of March, because remember, 1st of April, uh, we'll have the Motown uh, numbers as well start to trickle in. We'll just get uh, Shrishti in just a bit. But yeah, given the performance that you've seen for both Bajaj Auto, Maruti at a record high, would be interesting to see whether... Uh, you know, the strength remains with these players or is there a catch-up based on numbers uh, if there is an uptick at all in the farm equipment segment of uh, autos or not? But Nuresh, wanted to get your sense in on what's looking like the strongest within the auto basket right now and where is it that you're comfortable uh, buying or going long even at these levels? So, in terms of uh, strength, clearly, uh, Hero Motor Corp has been one which has... Uh, shown a lot of strength and now consolidated as well. So this could see another leg up once it sustains about 47.50. Maruti, the concern has been bullish from 10,000. The stock is at 12,500, 600. Uh, so after a 20, 25% move, the risk reward is not great for a fresh entry, but still looks uh, uh, promising for more. So in terms of strength, this is still well. I would go a little contra and look out for name, which has uh, consolidated and gone anywhere, not gone anywhere as Ashok clearly which is at around that 165 mark, so 165 to 170. This could uh, possibly surprise on the upside going forward. So I'll go a little contra and look out for Ashok Lely. Okay. Okay, we will just have Shrishti in just seconds from now. But four minutes left to go before we wind up for the week, for the quarter, for the month, for the series, and of course the financial year as well. We will close down with Ansh telling us about how the fiscal actually has panned out. And we will get to him in just a second from now. But we're closing in with good gains. Both Bajaj FinServe as, as, as well as Bajaj Finance have had a fabulous move. Uh, Agrasim, M&M, Motors, Adani, Hero Motor Corp, as 
SBI, ONGC have all had phenomenal gains in today's trading session. But what about the fiscal close? How's the fiscal been? Uh, let me take it across to Ansh and close it down with how uh, FI24 was for D Street. So this financial year, Nifty, Nifty Midcap, Nifty Small Cap, all three are registering its biggest single financial year gain in over 20 years. And all three have also touched record high levels as well. Nifty has gained around 29%, having Tata Motors and Bajaj Auto as the top gainer, gaining over 130%. Whereas in losers, we have only two stocks, which are HUL and HDFC Bank. Now let's talk about other broad indices. Mid-cap and small-cap are up by around 60 and 70 percent respectively and around 90 percent of both mid-cap and small-cap stocks are in green with over 20 percent stocks delivering return of more than 100 percent. Let's shift our focus to sectoral indices. All major sectoral indices are in green and they even touched record high levels this financial year except for Nifty IT index. Nifty Reality was the top sector gainer which was up by around 130 percent. This is the biggest uh, single financial year gain in last 10 years. Whereas if we talk about uh, other indices, we are seeing Nifty PSU Bank has been advancing for fourth consecutive financial year and same for Nifty Bank as well. Let's talk about market cap as well here. And we are seeing that India's market cap of stocks for financial year 24 has increased by around 123 lakh crore, out of which Reliance, Bharti Airtel, TCS, LIC and Tata Motors have contributed the most. So overall, financial year 24 looks very positive. Okay, that's about the financial year, but what about the day and the series? Anisha is here to sum up all of that. Anisha? Well, yes, the market is not ending as much as in style as we would have wanted it to be because it could have been a close at probably record high levels for the financial year and that could have been the photo finish that we would all have been wondering for. But for now, the market has actually ended off the highest point of the trading session. We do have Nifty with a gain of almost 1%, but it's a bit softer than what we expected. We could have well above being 22,500. At least that is what, uh, you know, uh, things would have been looking at as far as Nifty is concerned. But for now, still we are seeing a gain of almost 1%. Let's take a look at Nifty Bank as well, almost 47,140 at the index level. Again, given up from the highs of the trading session, but still uh, something to ride home. And overall for the year as well, we have seen decent amount of gains come by. It was PSU Bank sector, which was actually doing quite well for itself in the year gone by. And that continued today as well. We have seen a rally of almost 3% for Nifty Bank as far as PSU sector is concerned today. Taking a look at the mid cap and the small cap index too, a 70% kind of gain is what we have seen on the small cap index for the year gone by. Yesterday has been a bit more tempered, a bit more flattish, but after that 70% gain in the year, you can't ask for more as far as the small cap arena is concerned, but still a decent amount of close coming in. Let's take a look at the individual counters. Reliance Industries will come up for you on the screen. It started off well in the green, things were going okay, but in the last 30 minutes or so, it let out most of its gain and ended below the mark of 3,000 for Reliance Industries. Even the banking names, the likes of HDFC Bank as well as SBI and ICICI Bank, for most part of the trading session, they were holding in the green, but by the end of the trading session, they too gave up the gains. Infosys, for instance, was also one of the top gainers at the start of the trading session, but by the end of the day, we have seen that it's given up the gains and ending the game with a gain of around 2.7%. Individual names that deserve mention for the trading session today, VIP Industries does come to mind that 13% gain coming in on the counter as the analyst meet was held and of course the management talked about how they're looking at 15 to 20 percent kind of growth for the next uh, three to five years so that really supported the sentiment Aegis logistics is the other one that we should uh, watch out for in the trading session today it's closing in on style there was that initiation that came in from ifl uh, street is excited about the 500 rupee target price that they have in visage for the stock uh, right now at around 443 so overall it's a good close coming in for the Indian markets as far as FI24 is concerned. Last day of the trading session for the financial year could have been better, but nonetheless, a gain of almost 25 to 30 percent for the year will be taken by both hands by the bulls. We're wrapping up this trading session as well as the year FI24. Stay tuned to ETNR for more.